ESS, what a piece of toss, I always used to say, even though I never owned one. And this is how judging the book by its cover looks like. ESS cards were cheap, physically unappealing and of course every cheap computer came with one. So I naturally assumed they are useless. I grew up a bit and now instead of saying rubbish like that, I'd rather go and find out for myself. And this is exactly what I'm gonna do today. I'll have a look at these two cards. Both equipped with ESS 1868 chip. One looks like a cheap crap, the other one looks like even cheaper crap. But is it a good cheap crap? I never owned or even heard ESS sound card before, but I heard lots of positive opinions about them lately and still I'm rather skeptical about this. When I compare physical appearance to some high-end cards, it really looks cheap. Of course, there are some companies that used ESS chip and still looked good, like this Terratech for instance. But all I've got right now are these two cards. ESS Tech Company has been around since 1984 and started making PC audio in mid-90s. That's when most sound car companies had already been well established on the market. As always, what I'm mostly interested in is compatibility, sound clarity and MIDI quality. Sure, ease of installation and features like mixer are also important. I'm gonna use generic ESS drivers, mainly because I couldn't find specific drivers for these cards, but these should be pretty much the same. Cards don't have separate line-out and speaker-out connectors, so if you don't want to use a built-in amp, you need to use these jumpers here. The rest is typical 90s setup. Line-in, mic, game port, wavetable header and some CD-ROM IDE connector. Installation is pretty simple. The installation program just installs necessary software, driver and mixer, nothing else. Then it lets you set the base address, IRQ and DMA settings through the software and in the end, it asks you if you want to add the driver to the startup. Another piece of software it installs is a volume mixer. It's also pretty simple, just run the program with a bunch of options to set the volume to your liking. However, if you want to set your desired volume during startup, you need to do it by yourself. First one is just a silence. Built an amplifier turned off and the volume set to max. As you can hear, or maybe not hear, it's super silent. I didn't expect this at all. Actually, it's one of the quietest ISA sound cards I've ever used. I'm bloody surprised. First game on the list is Alone in the Dark. Unfortunately, also the first problem. Even though the card should be Sound Blaster Pro compatible, it always froze at startup when I try to use Sound Blaster Pro in the setup. I'm not sure if it's cards or game's fault, but it behaves the same with both cards. Fortunately, when I set it to Sound Blaster, it worked fine.
Sometimes the sound struggles during loading, which I've never experienced before with other sound cards. Space Quest 1 didn't work with some blast drivers at all. I had to use Adlib drivers to get it working. A similar situation arose while I was trying to get Space Quest 5 working. Maybe it worked fine. But sounds didn't work no matter what I tried to set in the setup. was the last one. I gotta admit, these cards surprised me. I didn't expect them to work this well, or more like almost perfectly. Almost perfect clarity, almost perfect compatibility, FM synthesis sounds almost like genuine OPL3. On installation was as simple as wiping your ass. If you want cheap cards with FM synthesis and don't care about wavetable with absolutely no hum, bass or any unwanted sounds, get some cards with ESS 1868 chip. The only game it didn't work with was Space Quest V. On the other hand, Simon the Sorcerer worked also with Sound Blaster 16 driver. Alright, that's it. Go get the card and have fun playing some games. Catch you next time. <laughs>